Time's expired. Chair, and I recognize the gentlelady from South Carolina, Ms. Mace, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Smith for hosting this very important hearing. I want to thank the gentlemen who are here today as well to take all of our very important questions. We're here to address a critical matter of national security and foreign policy in regards to Ukraine, uh, the need for oversight of assets, weapons, munitions, and other aid, lethal aid being provided to Ukraine. The invasion of Ukraine by Russia has highlighted the critical need for rapid aid and support that we're providing to that region. The conflict has resulted in, a, in heavy losses for both sides, um, but we've seen the Ukrainian forces, they've demonstrated their resilience and ability to conduct offensive operations, I believe, over the last year to everyone's surprise. Uh, there's no price for resiliency and their belief in their freedom and their fight for freedom. Um, they've been uh, on the world stage, I think have encouraged uh, and inspired many folks around the world. However, their capacity to defend their sovereignty and security is dependent on receiving timely and effective assistance. In particular, we've seen a troubling pattern of delays and bureaucratic hurdles, policy decisions that have slowed the delivery of aid to Ukraine. I've witnessed this firsthand. I've witnessed the State Department slow rolling uh, in, in some cases, particularly at the beginning of, of the invasion of Russia into Ukraine. And in my, it's my belief in the meetings I've had, both uh, uh, publicly and privately, and in the SCIF, that Ukraine just doesn't have a lot of time. And um, we want to make sure that our investment in, in their fight, uh, that they're going to win. Uh, it's more important than ever seeing what Russia's trying to do. They want to now take away Poland's borders and other countries. Uh, Ukraine can't lose this fight, in my estimation. The situation in Ukraine remains demands urgent action, a commitment to ensuring the lethal aid and support be provided expeditiously. Congress and DOD need to take the steps to remove any hurdles or address them to ensure the necessary resources are available uh, to fight for Ukraine to fight for its sovereignty and security. Failure to do so would not only endanger Ukraine, but also undermine global stability, global security. And it's my estimation Ukraine is just I believe under the under the gun and just does not have very much time left uh, in this endeavor. Um, my first question is for Undersecretary Call. I'm concerned about the time it took for the U.S. to fully leverage some of our existing processes, um, like convening the Senior Integration Group for Ukraine, SIG Ukraine, um, to disperse military aid to Ukraine. And thinking ahead, China and Taiwan, we all know that China is watching. Um, are, are there any specific improvements you would make to the department's decision-making process to ensure the U.S. is proactively readying this important partner rather than simply reacting with support? Some of the lessons learned, how long did it take to stand up uh, SIG Ukraine? Uh, some of what you learned over the last year in this process. Uh, thank you for that, and I'll just say we mm -hmm. share your sense of urgency. Uh, and there's always going to be red tape, but we have blasted through a lot of it. Uh, and if you had, I think, told us a year ago that we could have executed on $31.7 billion in security assistance to anybody, uh, I would have said that was bureaucratically impossible. And it's precisely because uh, we tried to blast through as much red tape as possible. Most of that assistance has come through PDA, Presidential Drawn and Authority, mm -hmm. and typically because we preposition things and, if, and get our ducks in a row, um, a lot of that equipment starts flowing in within days of the President signing uh, the PDA, and Lieutenant General Sims can uh, talk to you more about that. In terms of our internal processes, we have two. We have something called the Cross-Department Working Group, which is essentially the group uh, that my uh, office runs, but it's got stakeholders from all the services, the Joint Staff, the Combatant Commands, et cetera, uh, to rack and stack Ukrainian priorities and figure out the priorities for various PDA and USAI uh, packages. So that's really about kind of teeing up for the Secretary, ultimately these recommendations that then go over to the White House. We then have the SIG process, which you- uh, How long did it take to stand up the SIG? You know, I'd have to get back to you on the on the exact uh, date. I think the SIG was stood up within uh, a couple of months uh, of the. Is that fast the enough, in your opinion? Well, I think that we've. I mean, we've stood up a lot of processes that are new. Do you think um, that Taiwan has a couple of months? We already have a SIG for yeah. Taiwan. So to your point, you're, so stood to your, up and ready to go. So it's all. It, 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 meets, it meets monthly, chaired by the Deputy Secretary of Defense. Excellent. And then on the working group, their cross department working group. Um, is that working better now than it has been before because of the urgency through Ukraine? Have you all learned over the last year how to improve some of the red tape, I guess? What red tape was removed to make it work better, faster, more in this case? Well, just 
traditionally, mm -hmm. we've not provided, you know, presidential drawdown authority has been used to provide things in the amounts of, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars at the, at the upper end, yeah. not tens of billions of dollars. So there's a, there was a lot of learning curve. Essentially, what we uh, figured out was to make sure all the stakeholders were involved. You had an iterated process that culminates in a four-star meeting that I chair mm -hmm. about every 10 days. And then that pushes recommendations up to the chairman and the secretary, who then push those recommendations uh, over to the White Generally House. 